Hi, my name is David Blissett. I recently encountered a problem when taking models created in Fuse, loaded through Maximo into Unity, whereby there was a transparency issue, materials weren't being assigned correctly, and it wasn't quite clear I, as to why that was happening, as in, in previous months, the process worked perfectly. So because I had to go off and investigate what the issue was and what the fix was to get through that hurdle, I thought um, there's probably going to be other people encountering similar issues and that's what this video is going to be documenting. So in this video we're going to step through all the steps required to resolve an issue where you've got a model taken from Fuse brought through Maximo and loaded into Unity and then the materials are not assigned correctly, there's transparency or there's some kind of shader issue. Okay, let's step into it. Okay, so right now we're gonna be exporting uh, the textures. So for this model, I'm gonna call this, this guy here, uh, Jason, let's call him Jason, all right? want to get this export out to the file system first so that what we're looking to do here now is the actual textures right so I'm gonna call the folder JSON and then make a selection on that and the character's name is gonna be JSON so when we generate this what's gonna be exported and it's a physically based equivalent that we're choosing and, and that is important because that will mean that we'll need to change the pipeline when we get into Unity so that Unity understands how to render uh, what's been exported correctly. Okay, so the next step here is to kind of push this to Maximo. And again, this is going to be going through the Adobe Cloud. So we're going to say the character's name is Jason. We can call it anything we like. So we'll go ahead and save. And what this is doing, it's doing a push to the Clo Adobe Cloud. So you'll need your own account with them. I've got a subscription uh, for the full suite. So that will allow me to have some space in the cloud for which they'll be able to make the assignments and do everything I want to be able to do, whether that's animation or just the rigging process. For, for the purpose of this video, we're looking at doing the, the actual rigging process. So we're generating cloth, textures, the actual mesh, and the next step, we should see uh, the browser pop up uh, and taking us through to the Maximo section of the Adobe servers. Okay, so here we are back. Uh, we've now got the auto rigging process kicking in uh, and we've been prompt to say that this is gonna take roughly about two minutes to actually get the full bones, joints uh, articulated within the model bound, weight painted, um, and then actually assigned a default animation to the model itself. Voila! 11 minutes to generate a character, have bones assigned, weight painted, rigged, textured, and loaded on the server within a WGL type con WebGL configuration. That's amazing. Again, there was nothing like this going a couple years back. You, had, you actually needed teams of people with different skill sets to be able to actually do this kind of thing. Now, we could go ahead and, and start playing around with some animations, but for the time being, we want to keep this specific video focused on the actual uh, generation of the model and getting it into the environment, the target environment, which for us is going to be Unity. So we're going to choose the export format FBX for Unity. Doing a download now. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I think Unity is just about configured. Uh, the project and here we go. It's now launching into the actual solution um, And we've got a vanilla workspace for which to work with now um, As you can see we've got the assets folder the scenes folder. We'll wait for the scene to load But while doing that I'll go ahead and create uh, a base folder called fuse And within this fuse folder we're gonna want to load the actual assets itself so Let's go ahead and see if we can uh, find that location on the disk space. Hard drive, whatever you call it. All right, 
here we go. Okay, so this is where we're actually going to want to place the, the model that's been downloaded to the fuse location. So what we're looking to take, we're looking to take the JSON folder and the fuse model folder. And we're just copying it into the asset-fuse location. Okay, so this is a normal prompt. If you're familiar with Fuse at all from his start projects, you'll have come across this where it's uh, not configured the actual normal maps by default. We'll just go ahead and click select now or fix now. Okay, let's go over to the scene. Now it's an empty scene. Let's see if we can actually find the model and see what it looks like. So there are the actual uh, textures. And this is the model. Let's drag it into the scene and see what we've got. Now it's come across. You must have normal maps because you can see the transparency going on there. Let's see if we can actually have a look on what, what's causing this issue. Now it would appear as though the textures and materials haven't been assigned. Um, I've come across this before and it would appear to be that uh, we need to do some work with the, the materials themselves. So there are the materials, they have been generated and Unity is aware of the normal maps because as you can see here by this readout, you can see that there are normal maps being applied. So what's the problem? Well the problem is going to have to do with a few things, uh, particularly being with the fact that while we have got the materials themselves come through, we can't edit them as they stand. We need to export them along with the, uh, both the textures and the material. So we'll go ahead and say uh, extract textures. So I'll just go up on level. And we're going to create a folder called materials and textures. And let's go ahead and it's going to do an export of the textures to that location. Now, before we didn't have to do this specific step, uh, normally you would have brought the models in along with the textures and it would have auto mapped them. So again, it's telling you that the material we're using on the texture is a normal map. It's not been marked as such. So we go ahead and click fix now. Now, as you can see, we now have materials being assigned, but we've got some transparency going on here and we really don't want that. Uh, it's not normal to be able to see somebody's eyeballs from the exterior. Let's go ahead and export the actual materials. Again, they have not been assigned at this time. So, clicking ex extract, and we're gonna place them in the exact same location as we've done with the textures. Okay, so now we have the actual materials being assigned but that hasn't made much difference to what's going on as far as the actual um, readout of the, the actual character and the reason for that is the shaders that are being applied uh, well they're not correct and we need to fix that so uh, it's currently using the standard shader pipeline and uh, we're going to need to upgrade to the lightweight shader pipeline and the reason for that being is the, the fuse environment if you recall we did an export uh, using the physical base shaders uh, and so unity knows how to use that it just means that we have to tell it to actually use that so we'll go into the package manager uh, by default we only got these fuse being uh, selected here Let's see if we can show the preview packages and we're searching for the light weight render pipeline. So we'll go ahead and do an install. It's probably take a minute or so to download. 
Okay, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, we now have the lightweight render pipeline fully installed. Uh, so that's only one step. So if we go ahead and preview the character, you can tell that, well, not much has changed. Um, we've still got the kind of artifact where we can actually see into the character's mouth and eyeballs through the actual base materials that have been applied to the skin and there's some transparency that's going on pretty much throughout the entire character. So why is that? Just because you've installed the lightweight render pipeline doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually there um, and uh, utilized. So let's see if we can go ahead and create a um, an assignment of the lightweight render pipeline to the default graphics processing pipeline for the Unity environment. So the first thing you want to do is click on create rendering and lightweight render pipeline asset and this will create you a base uh, package for which we can then assign and utilize within Unity. So I'll go ahead and uh, within the rendering pipeline we need to do an assignment to the project. So we're in the graphics section and we're just going to go ahead and drag that lightweight render pipeline package and assign it to the, the graphics processing section of project. So go ahead and click close and as you can see for some reason the shader is now broken uh, and that's expected. What we're going to need to do is now upgrade all the materials within the environment to use uh, the lightweight render pipeline. Fortunately, this is just a single button press, so we go ahead, click on edit, render pipeline, and upgrade. So we get a warning to say that this is gonna override all the uh, existing settings, that's fine. And then now, we have a much better readout, <laughs> um, but we, we have a, a new issue. We've got a bit of uh, transparency going on in the material here. So let's see if we can go through the materials themselves and, and make sure that everything is, is working the way it should be. So all I've done here is I've clicked it on the specific section of the model and just expanded uh, the shader itself. And it's just done some kind of an update or refresh. So uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that for the different sections. Uh, now, why it is we have to do that, I can't say, but uh, it does give us the fix. Uh, click on the, uh, the pants for the character, expand the shader. Something tells me this is probably just going to be a, a refresh issue at this stage, but now we have the full character loaded into Unity using the Lightweight Render Pipeline and uh, everything fully updated and ready to go. Do that for the boots as well and that's it so within literally 15 minutes we've been able to go from uh, the fuse application where we were able to create the character brought the character to the Adobe cloud uh, for the maximum section to be able to get the rigging going from there did a download and then re-import into unity set up the lightweight render pipeline and we're able to preview the actual asset fully ready to animate within the environment. My name is David Blissett. If you like what you've seen, leave a comment. Um, if you did like what you see, if you think that there's a better approach, again, I'm happy to have a comment. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.